you did that for us. Thankful for salvation that you're doing in us, Lord. And for being born again, Lord, that's when you're working through us. I'm so thankful that Jesus spoke these words. I only do what I see my Father do. Father, I'm thankful for James. It talks about how being a doer of the word and how if you if we aren't being and doing the word, then we, we're like a man who looks in the mirror and walks away and forgets what he looks like. Father, there's a cry in our hearts to know who we are in Christ, to know what we look like. Who we are as you see us, Lord, in the finished work filtered through Christ. So, Father, thank you so much that you are alive and well in us, Lord. That you are not a dead God, that you are raised and resurrected and alive in us, God. So, Lord, I pray that you continue to open up our eyes to see great things from your word. I'm so thankful, Father. Thank you for the word that you don't give up on us, Lord. That you continue to mold us, you continue to work in us, Lord, and that we have evidence of the fingerprints of God even today working in our midst. Hallelujah. You are a good God. You are a good God. No matter what the world declares, the church declares, you are a good God. You are a holy God. And our God reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's a done deal. Jesus got our family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a clap this morning. Let's just while we're still standing here, we'll just take a moment and pray over our tithes and offerings, thanking the Lord for His many, many blessings, recognizing Him as our provider. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for that. We can come forward with our ties and offerings. Lord, that you would use them to bless others, to expand your kingdom. And Lord, that we can freely give back our tithe, Lord, that we can bring also offerings, Lord, because we can trust in you to provide for us, Lord. Lord, you, through your love for us, you have a way of, Lord, of making the 90 go farther than the 100. And we are obedient in tithe, Lord. We thank you for that. We praise you, Lord. Lord, guide us each in all that you would have us to do, Lord. Not only giving our money, Lord, but our time, our talents, our abilities. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. You may be seated. As we approach the Christmas time, you'll notice a little difference up the front here. I just want to draw your attention over to the cross, which normally has its presence in the back. Not that we want to forget about it, push it to the background because it's the foreground of our lives. But we bring it forward because it is significant at Christmas time. We have the manger, we have the cross. The one thing I want you to note and remember that we come and we gather and we sing songs and we have the good times around Christmas because we're all we're celebrating the coming, the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But so often because it's cute and it's nice and everything, we have a tendency to leave Jesus in the manger. And you'll notice that the manger is empty. Jesus grew up to be a man and bring the word. And you'll also notice that the cross is empty. Jesus was crucified for our sins because of, he did everything for us as Melissa said, that we can have eternal life with Him. <coughs> and then we have the white, represents the fact that He is a risen God. We serve a risen, living God. Right, you give Him a clap. Give him a hand. And He is alive and God. And He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And as we celebrate that, this Christmas time, we can remember that 
that he is there. He is not a baby in the manger. He is not a crucified God hanging on a cross. He is risen. He is alive. And as we start our Advent season, we have four red candles as we go through the weeks, as we go towards Christmas, just a reminder as we point towards that celebration of Jesus' first coming. And as we look forward as his people to his second coming, when we will be with him for eternity. So I'm going to call upon the Janot family to come forward and light the first Advent candle. Researching about the Advent uh, wreath and candles, I found this is probably as many different ways of doing it as there are churches. So if we're not doing it quite the way you remember from maybe another church or from your childhood, this is the way that we do it here because we can do it. The thing is we honor the Lord. We look forward to His second coming and we remember and we celebrate His first coming. So we'll just remember that as each week as you, Pastor Dave is also going to be speaking on some of the different scriptures that we're talking about as we look forward to the celebration of Christmas. Just going to draw your attention to the bulletin. Of course, today is our Christmas pot blessing downstairs in the hall down there. So if you've Come unprepared, join us anyways. There's always lots of food and just enjoy some time of fun and fellowship together. I think everything else, uh, there was one announcement. Jean asked me that she wanted to make an announcement. Good morning. Ladies, we asked you uh, to bring your coffee mugs yesterday, your Christmas coffee mugs, and we didn't think we'd have to ask you to take them home, though. <laughs> we have two that were left behind. One is red and white checked with Christmas trees on it. The other one is white with a band of snowmen around the top. I kind of like that one myself. <laughs> so if you would like to come and claim them, I'll leave them over there on the platform. And uh, Kathy Dean, could you come here? I have a special presentation for you, please. <laughs> We're just kidding. It's baking soda. You put out fire. <laughs> well, that's why I'm so glad to see you in the channels. Yesterday, thank the Lord that we still have a building. <laughs> Kathy thought that she would enjoy add the festivities by lighting the building on fire as she enjoyed the ladies' breakfast. So just giving her some baking soda. I was thinking also maybe somebody makes a small fire extinguisher and put a host in it. Uh, it should be carried around. What are the those articles of that? I don't know. That's a good idea. I wonder. 
So you will also notice that during the Advent season that Kathy will not be one of the candidates. Draw your attention also to the new calendar that's out, so put it on your on your fridge or wherever you can see it, and just a um, reminder of the upcoming events you'll notice. The first thing you may have noticed if you looked at it is the fact that uh, for Christmas we are having our service on Christmas Eve as we normally do, but that will be our Christmas service and we're not having the service on Christmas Day, and then we're having a special service, details to follow on New Year's Day, something very different, very special that I think uh, We'll just be able to just praise the Lord and just share uh, all at the same time. Just have a great time. Just wanted to, the email went out to most people, I believe. The shoe boxes. There was, the final count was 126, Maria. Well, there's still some coming. So 126 and counting out of 150 boxes. I just want to, on behalf of everyone I, I know, give a special thanks to Maria and Krista for all the work that they do. Without you, it wouldn't be happening here. I know that you're following the Lord has led you into being part of this ministry, and it's a blessing to all of us. Thank you very much. The one thing that um, Maria had prayer, I think it was either Tuesday or Thursday this week, I can't remember. She shared that there was a mountain, a village up in the mountains in Mexico. I got it right in Mexico, that's right. And there was no church in this village. But the shoeboxes started going to this village. And that started a ministry and a church was established in that village because of the shoeboxes going there first. So they do a lot. And you just have to remember that. Uh, and continue to pray over over the boxes as they go. And, and it's, it's a huge job. It takes a huge number of volunteers and that to get them there. And so I just ask you to keep them in your prayers that uh, they will be delivered and, and everyone will, all the children will be able to get a shoebox. I think, um, I better be careful. I believe so. It's someone's birthday today. Catherine Lawrence has a birthday. Now, we're going to sing different birth songs for the birthday, sing happy birthday, but I've completely forgotten what they are. Melissa, do you remember the new... You want to come, in, you, you, come on and get us, read us here, please, because I'm drawing a blank. Do you remember enough to do it? Or we're going to have to fall back. Anne's going to have to, Anne knows me. And he mailed me some different songs, some more church <laughs> songs for uh, oh Betty. She's not here. Hmm. So anyway, we need to sing the song more appropriately. Where is she? We won't embarrass her. I embarrassed you enough. So you can start off. <laughs> happy birthday to you, oh happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may feel Jesus here. Happy birthday to you, oh happy birthday to you. And the best year you ever had. Okay, I'm going to call the kids up. And 